Uh, welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. This is when you sing with me, dude. Uh, are you mad at me? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah no, Daryl is out for blood today. <laughs> anyway, so we already mentioned um, the two agreements, right? Um, now, um, yeah, this one is also quite hard, right? Bec again, remember they're all intertwined. Mm -hmm. Be impeccable with your word. What does that mean to you, Luda? Uh, I particularly found this one to be sticky and it struck a chord because it's one of those you kind of need to be kind to yourself and you know say positive things otherwise you attract all the negatives you say about yourself but then on the flip side there's the whole do I need to be honest with myself right like if you felt you were not great at this particular thing right um, do you lie to yourself or do or you see what I mean like am I framing it as I'm lying to myself or am I sort of you know saying the reality of it mm. so okay based on my knowledge of you guys obviously he's my brother and like he's my close friend I think that it's hard for us to give you a different opinion because we're similar with regards to work in terms of like how we approach it right sure from a from a perspective of perfection so I like I was wondering when what when you were talking like what answer could he give mm. that's like because he's the same right and I'm the same whereby even looking at this video now it, it will be a situation where you're like flip did we laugh too hard yeah, like, true. It, it, like, like like did we laugh too hard like was a conversation flowing right so and then it it, it, it spirals into your point of negativity mm. right and then it's like okay dude like did we actually do a good job? Then you start not believing that you're doing a good job. Then you go on YouTube and you see other like three trios. Yeah. And then the numbers don't validate that you did a good job. And then I mean look the views, right? <laughs> Although that's not that's not something we should, you know. No, 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 we're having an honest conversation, right? Like regarding to the views. Mm. So, okay, my perspective of it, we have a different perspective. My perspective of it, right, is we don't gain money of this, we're doing it out of out of our passion, sure. right? So, with regards to the views, yes, I look at them, but I've learned not to use that as validation. The oh. same way I, I try not to take any compliments, like in terms of personal, because when a person's angry, they'll, um, they'll say negative things about you. When a person is happy, mm. they'll say great things about you, right? So if you then take anything that they say to heart, you... Your, your point of validation about your worth and self-worth of yourself it's dependent on them is dependent mm. on other people yeah and and for me i actually want you guys opinion the view situation as much as it's not where i'd like it to be but i'm okay with it because i'm enjoying the process this process what do you think about the whole view situation and yeah what do you mean what? like does do you does it affect you in terms of whether you, th we, you think we're doing a good job at this podcasting video thing, I think for me, like, um, like it's the whole views thing. It, for me, it will come in time. Mm -hmm. I think for me, my concern is: Are we producing good content consistently? Views will always come. Like, if and I'm of mindset that you know, it's a process. It's a journey yeah. to reach there, right? Yes, start to the end in mind, but you also need to enjoy the process. It's kind of like you go to gym and you don't have the dream body you want after a few tries and you're upset at going to gym mm. because I don't have my dream body now no you have to work the process we don't know it could take us six months to be satisfied with our views it could take us ten years to be satisfied with our views sure. we may never be satisfied with our views you know and I think we probably all gym the type of people it's like once we're consistently let's say getting a hundred views it's like okay a thousand Mm. Even I think even if we even reach a point where we're getting a million views consistently, we probably say how do we get to ten million? And so it's almost like an endless thing which you're never gonna catch. But it's for me what's more important is trying to consistently refine the process that you're doing. And I think that can apply to everything. Be it your exercise goals, be it your work goals, be it your education, be it um, your creative content, even a business. Right? You focus on the process and trying to make it better, trying to make it run smoother. And that's the way I look at it. Yes, because the outcomes can come at yeah. any given time. No, I absolutely love that. And it helps if you have a growth mindset, right? Um, I think the author is Carol 
why I got blank. Oh, so you're coding books now as well. Uh, I've, I've taken uh, a page of Carol's uh, how to source it up. <laughs> it DMs so, about to load. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About to load. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so, um, yeah, growth mindsets. Come on, come the X and J. Growth mindsets. Growth mindsets. I got the blues. Uh, <laughs> <it. laughs> So, um, and for me, I think the most important thing is, uh, as you mentioned, learning, growing, and just becoming better at your craft, right? Because I think I looked at some of my earlier videos, and or at least my part, and I used to, I still cringe, right? But I think slowly but surely you get comfortable at it, you become better at expressing yourself, and I think that's absolutely important, and that's part of the, I guess, the enjoyment part, right? Mm -hmm. And then secondly, I think it's important. Uh, for us to look at each episode as would I want to watch this, right? Would I, as a nude way, on a random Saturday or weekday, want to actually tune into these gents and just listen to their perspectives? And I think uh, it's definitely becoming a yes, mm. like a solid yes. And that, for me, sort of validates it, right? And so I, when I brought up the numbers, it's if you already have a terrible view of something, the numbers can sort of be used as confirmation bias, yeah. right? And that's why I guess you just don't take it personal. Mm -hmm. So can I say something about like being impeccable with your art, right? Because um, so obviously, um, like earlier on this year, um, like something traumatic happened to me, and then I ended up eating a lot, right? And I and, and I mean like and I'm, I, like being Did you stop? Huh? Did you stop? <laughs> <laughs> It's just a question, but anyway, continue. I mean, I don't want to be the one to say it, but... Um, guys, that, that's the whole point. We're getting there. <laughs> <laughs> that's the whole point, gents. But, um, so, in this whole process, right, end up, like, drinking, eating, and, like, just not caring about, like, my physical health, right? Because mm. I was just so into my head and everything. And then now that, like, I'm over it and I've gone... But there's still this weight like mm. that's sitting on me, right? And then there's always that question of like, oh my gosh, like I just hate how I look right now. Yeah. Because how I look right now reminds me of where you've been. I've been, been right? Sure. But then there's that the conversation in the morning. Like I'm fighting myself in my head to be like, dude, do you really love yourself, right? Mm. Because if you love yourself, you're not gonna speak to yourself as yeah. if you hate yourself every morning and every time you look at your body. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's, it's understanding that there's a process. Like before, probably this I had an epiphany like a week ago, right? Before, like I wanted to be gymming three times a day. Sure. I wanted to be doing all these things because I just hated myself and how I spoke about myself to myself yeah. reflected in how I engaged people in the world. Mm. Like physically, I'm just talking about physically right mm. now. I didn't want to go out and take pictures. I didn't want to go out... Um, and dates, right? Yeah. Because I was afraid of how my clothes would fit me. So it, it genuinely had a reflection, but it's how I was speaking to myself. And I got to a point where I sat down and I was just like, yo, dude, um, this is the only body that you have. Mm. This is the only mind that you have. Mm. And it doesn't make sense if you wake up and you speak so crappy, even though like mentally I'm having a great time, right? Mm. But there's still that physical insecurity. Yeah. And, the, and, and I heightened it. With every time, like, I, like I've decided not, not even look at the scale and just simply just exercise, right? Yeah. I've, decided, I've decided to build a, a relationship with exercise mm -hmm. more than the idea of losing weight. Because I when I don't get my weight goal, or I, like one time, I have pizza with, with gents, I then be like, yo, dude, you're such an idiot. Yeah. You, you're not disciplined enough. Mm -hmm. uh, you're not the person that you think you are. Because I genuinely consider myself as a hardworking, disciplined gent. Mm -hmm. That's a very interesting point you mentioned, especially with uh, body positivity, right? Mm -hmm. And how it works for, I think, one gender and... You can say women. And not for the other gender. You, you don't right? want to be cancelled, no? Eh? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you still like views. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and I think... Uh, so I'm sort of in two minds about it. The first, definitely love yourself, right? That's without a doubt. But then the second about, you know, being brutally honest is, I think it should also sort of inspire change, right? So if you feel like you're not fit, you're not, you know, where you want to be physically, then sharp, you should hit the gym. But I think in hitting the gym, you shouldn't really, you know, practice self-hate. So it's a, it's a so balancing act. What do you think? 
I agree with you. I actually have nothing else to. Yeah, you're to quiet for the first to, time. Yeah. Hey, yo. Yay! Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a milestone, guys. That's a massive milestone. <laughs> okay, but okay. In terms of being impeccable with your word, right? So now we've spoken about internal. What about the external? In towards like other people, like what the jokes you say to other people. Um, that lying, because being mm-hmm. a people also involves lies, right? Promises you make. Promises mm-hmm. you make. Mm-hmm. Uh, Selling dreams. Yeah. <laughs> Professionally and romantically. Why are you quiet now? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think uh, that reaction there. What happened? Um, okay? Good job. Why are you, you short circuiting? <laughs> Like, okay. Okay, let me. Let, <laughs> you wanna talk about? It? No, no. Okay, actually, let me give you like a, an example from the book, right? Mm. Um, it kind of combines like all the three that we've spoken, right? With this being impeccable with your word. So the guy said we spend a lot of time telling each other what we'd like to be instead sure. of what we are. So he says you go on a date with a hun, right? It's a third date. Mm. Oh, you're just chilling. You guys start projecting. Not necessary. You guys start dreaming about a life in ten years' time. Mm. Marrying you, and then you guys start selling each other the specific dream with no ill intentions, mm. right? But then you start believing in this dream, and, it, and then you start making assumptions, and then you start taking personal. Mm. And he says that it's better for us to be honest about where we're at right now. Let's let's spend less time in romantic, uh, getting to know each other conversations, talking about how I'm gonna marry you, mm-hmm. and I'm not even sure I'm gonna date you, because. Mm. Men and women use that when you know that someone wants marriage. Mm-hmm. You you start to sell a dream on me potentially marrying you. Okay. And then that person tends to believe in that dream, and then when it doesn't happen, there's some sense of friction between the two of you guys. Sure. So he's saying in getting to know each other, we need to fully just get to know each other, like not just, let's just have a conversation like oh dude, let's just talk about the sky. It doesn't have to be deep. Mm. Um, and it goes with like. Sometimes we don't think about what we say and how it impacts the other person. Mm. I, I tell a girl I'm going to marry you and then I go home and I play PlayStation and I forget about it. <laughs> she sits there and she's like, okay, what if he's actually serious? <laughs> <laughs> Is that why you're loving the, selling the dreams? No! <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm actually speaking about like this whole dream setting, the reason I was laughing is because like I remember like two years ago, like I was at a point where yo dog, I was promising about ten people I'm gonna I'm gonna date and marry them. And, and then what happened? <laughs> I I didn't like how I felt off it, it like every disappointment, it, like I didn't like how I felt, like I felt shitty. Mm. So I then decided on the whole honesty thing. I see. I to see. be like this is where I'm at in my life. Um, and this is how I feel about things. Mm. Things might change, but right now, this is where I am standing. Mm. Um, but here's another thing can people handle the truth always? Yeah, I was about to ask are people ready for that level of honesty? Mm. It's almost as if you kind of need to mask the honesty. Why do you need to? I don't think the truth general hurts. population. Huh? The truth hurts. Mm. Bars there. Damn. Experience? Yeah, the truth. The truth is, it's 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 very. Cause I think that what we say is, I want transparency. I want honesty. No, we, we don't. We don't really want people to tell us what we want, want to hear. That's what we want. Like it's very few. I mean, we see in our friendships. I think all of us, right? Like it's very few people who actually want your honest opinion. What they want us to do is almost just validate whatever. Validate they whatever it is that. <laughs> really, what we want is validation, not honesty. Because uh, honestly, the truth hurts. Uh, mm. Like, if Tulani tells me something, like he's told me some very shocking things over this. I've also told some very, let me say shocking things, let me say hurtful things. Mm. I've told some very hurtful things, but him and I have that understanding that, yes, even though it hurts, we still want to hear it because it's like, I will not get better unless. And still tell me, listen, dog, you're. Uh, you're a freaking loser. <laughs> Get your life together. <laughs> don't, 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 Get your life together. Don't, don't, don't you think that level of understanding happens when you believe that the other person genuinely wants to tell you this mm. for good? Uh, there I, has to be a trust component definitely. with the person who is speaking this truth. I think there's a trust component, yes. But it's also the way you view yourself. Like, like if you are not at a point where you're like, 
I'm not trying to get someone to always validate my experience and my ideas. And I want someone to tell me the hard truth so I can get better. It doesn't matter how well intended someone else is. Because you may never even see the intention. Because right? it's not about what the intention is, really. It's about how you perceive the intention to be. Ooh. So it's a two way thing. Yeah, it's a two way thing. Okay, speaking about intentions, all right? Mm. There's, a, there's an intention, then there's an action. Mm. Okay. What matters the most? Intentful actions. Explain, sir. Uh, an action that has an intent, or that's backed by an intent. But no, every, every action has an intent. Yeah, it, th th that's the whole point of my question. Is that like every like you could, you could let's say you cheat, let's say you cheat on a hunt. Let's not use that. It's like why is everything be about cheating? Right? It's like this is the only examples that you can give. <laughs> no, it's all like it's all like it's always cheating. <laughs> no, it's but being ignored. <laughs> So I was breaking your heart. I'm living a sad life. Right? I'm living a sad life. Do you life. Not being on being on Promising marriage. <laughs> not Selling dreams. 24-7. Yeah. Feeling just terrible flags, about yeah. it. Yeah, just red flags. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Toxic behavior, yeah. I, I, I was recently told I'm a walking red flag. I don't know what that means, but like... Hmm. I think it's self-explanatory. <laughs> I mean, I think if, if our audience doesn't pick up on that, <laughs> well, no, <laughs> you're the one who be blamed. Daryl, it's also the earrings. I feel like that just gives it away. Ah, uh, anyway, guys. So about about this intent, actually, yeah. look, look. I think you someone can have intentions but not back them up with actions. Right. That's that's the whole question. And then someone can have, you know, like it's it's when you let. Ah, I don't want to use a relationship idea, but if you you know. Caught someone properly, do the you know movie I, dates, wait, let, 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 let but me not really genuinely love them or have that intention. Then that's sort of using it in a. Let me use another example, right? Um, we've kind of used this example before, right? You want to be a musician, right? Sure. But you've got some academic um, capacity, right? Cool. Um, your parents have always envisioned you as a doctor. Cool. Um, and they really off the belief that this is going to be the best thing for you in the future. Sure. To be a doctor because it provides some stable income, right? Cool. But you feel like internally there's a calling for you to be a musician. Cool. Um, the intention, as your parents believe yeah. it, is that you're going to live a life where you're financially stable because that's what our parents really care about, right? Cool. But you now have lived in the 21st century where financial stability might, be, might not be the things that you aspire for. Cool. So that's the main question here, is that mm. like they have great intentions, right, mm -hmm. for your for your good and well being in the future, but the action is that we're gonna force you to go to whatever university and study medicine. Sure. Um so yeah, what's the question now? The question is like what do you then believe? Look, the intentions are definitely there. The actions I guess in this case back the intention because they're obviously forcing you to go to varsity. Your intention is to be a musician. Now, uh, whether you practice or not is sort of in question. But if you are intentional about the practice, let's say in medical school you are, you know, your schedule is full and then you say on a weekend I need to make sure I at least practice four hours, right? I think that's very like actionable intent or what, what did I say previously? But where you back your, your actions. So you're making these things up? No, man. I'm saying like combining the two, like your intent is there and you're actually doing something about it, right? Where you are conscious and you are actively doing something about it. Um, that's, what I, that's what I'm saying. What do you think fellow dog brother? Fellow? <laughs> I don't know. I, I think they both, it's, it's hard for me to say which one's more important. I think you need both of them. Because like Luda's pre earlier example, like you can have good intentions, but if your actions don't match your intention, mm -hmm. time goes out the window. And the same way you can be doing certain actions, but if intentions don't match the action, then your know, one can be come across as manipulative. Or it could be that you are being manipulative or someone red flag. Trying to get them to do you know whatever. And I'm the one with the red flag. It is okay. like you want them to do. So I, I can't say one's more important than the other. <laughs> Both are important. Both are important. Okay, what no. do you think? Me? Mm. Yeah. Between the I, two. I, 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 you can't buy yourself time. 
<laughs> Look, man, for, for my experience, uh, I think actions matter more than intentions because actions are actually things that are done, right? And those are the things that tend to have the greatest impact. And you, there's less inter interpretation needed and assumption for actual actions. Okay. So if someone says, I love you, right? Mm -hmm. But then does the opposite of that. Uh, or you, even you, you then don't see the love that they claim mm -hmm. to have for you. I'm talking in general. I'm sure. I'm not talking about relationship, right? Cool. But someone could not actually say, yo, dude, I love you, right? As my brother. Mm. But every day I, I check up on you and every day but, but I'm that asking could, how, how it, you are. But it, those are actions. So that's how I see that you love me. Okay, now I get you. But in, in the <laughs> love example, you know, love language is also a thing. So yeah, I that, might interpret it in a certain way or not acknowledge it because it's not speaking to my love language. Yes. But the handsome, oh yeah. But is that not manipulative? I think it, it's so a very if, great area. If you, if you only focus on someone's actions, never consider the intention behind those actions. Right? Because with the women now you're just focusing on outcomes. Mm -hmm. Understanding the meaning behind it. As a kid, your parents shout at you. Mm. You're focusing on the actions. You're not understanding the, okay, shark, actually I did something wrong. And my parents' intention is to teach me the right way to do something. No, it's my parents Being are to hurt. My parents is hurting me. And so because my parents is hurting me, they are a person that hurts me. Because actions aren't always positive on the surface. Same on the intentions. Right? No, but same, man. That's why I can't say either. So so with regards to like the whole parents thing, like shouting on tree for not doing something that they assume. You have to remember, right? Like our parents are still human beings at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. The older you become, the more you realize that. Yeah. yeah. Like a, but yeah. I think there are clear black and white examples of it. I don't know. Let's say you go and steal another kid's shoes <laughs> and you come home. Like, no, 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 but then, <laughs> those are not the examples that are referring to now. Mm -hmm. The examples they're referring to are not black and white. Mm -hmm. Yo, dude, you failed. Therefore, yelling at you, even you. You can't be dumb enough no, but, when no, you come you, back home no, with a fail report you're, you're, and then you're expect that to be like, <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 get your favorite game. Yeah, yeah. How? Come on, dude. No, but that's a black and white. But what we're referring to here is, is that when you assumed you did something great, right? Mm -hmm. And your parents yell at you because you never did this great thing in how they had envisioned it. Mm. But what if that's if when you start questioning. Huh? What if, what if, what if, what if, yes, it's to you it's great. What if it isn't great? That's that's where our question lies. Is that like the intention of the parent is to correct you, right? Mm -hmm. But whatever you put in, which is the next point, to do everything. See what I did there? To do everything to your best ability. Been, <laughs> been, been taking notes. <laughs> 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 teaching you anyway. anyway, so the next one. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna add to the point. So next one, which is gonna be quite short. Um, so, do everything to your best ability, right? Um, and to answer your question, if you have this in mind, right? If you feel as if, like for example, let's say in sports parents, right? Mm -hmm. And you just didn't give it your all because physically you're just incapable of being the best person in the team. Your dad comes home and he yells at you. He's like, yo, did you make me look like a Popeye there in front of other parents? Participation trophy. Yeah, but then not winning anything. Yeah, but then you're looking at it like, yo, dog. <laughs> Physically, there's nothing else that's there, <laughs> right? But if you are playing and you felt as if you didn't give your all, mm. no matter what, like if someone says negative things about it, you actually feel as if I could have done better. Mm. Can I ask you something? What makes you think we're even honest with ourselves to the point that we can? Uh, Sit down and say, you know what? Here, I actually tried my best. Now I think you, know you, 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 you can be the only, um, you, you, you're the only person that can know that. Mm. No, no one from the exterior can tell you that no. you've done. Okay, yes. no, cool, but what if you don't do it? You know you didn't. Now you get criticized by it, but because you feel bad as well for not doing your best, then you, you now see. react outwards. Yes. Yeah, but that's how you protect yourself. Yeah, exactly. So, and that's the wrong story. So, for instance, from touches, right? There are some games, I think, where we our team has lost. But I'm happy because I did my part. 
I like read the lines, <laughs> put one of quote of <laughs> and, 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 and you leave touch. I didn't drop yeah. one of <laughs> and you leave touch smiling and niggas are mad. And guys on the group they're like, yes, that was a terrible game. We need to up the standard. But I'm like, I'm happy as a, <laughs> you know. But that's uh, I think you, I don't know, man. It's just being brutally honest with yourself. Mm. It's it's really like an internal thing. Like my firm belief, and it's been confirmed by this book, is that like. Just give it your all. If you give it your all, no one will have the capacity when they criticize you to ruin your day. It's not to say to take criticism, but you have an understanding that I gave it my all. And this criticism comes from a point where now I need to do things outside of my own capacity. Right? I need to learn from whoever's criticizing from me. So clearly, my all is enough. I'm not saying that giving it your all always has the best result. That's not what I'm saying at all. All I'm saying is that giving you all from an internal perspective makes you feel as if there's nothing more I could leave out. Like, mm. like, like you know, like for example, like in varsity for exams where you felt like you half ass the studying, right? When you fail, it hurts more because you felt like I could have done better. Yeah. And I, I, <laughs> I, I think also touching on what Daryl mentioned, mm. it becomes very, very difficult then to I guess except not having given it your all that is a very deep problem and it can easily amplify into other issues right because uh, then yeah, you're saying you know you haven't done your you know you didn't do your all you're your best and then someone is criticizing you and now how the hell do I take that L but you know and still be okay with myself because like now it's like a, I guess double the criticism one from yourself and, and one two from, from the others you know mm-hmm. And I think that can easily crush you mm. if you're not like conscious or, or cautious as to how you can handle that. Mm. I think that in this case is what this guy is trying to, I guess, prevent. Mm-hmm. What, before we go, one last question, and I'd like people, if you haven't answered that, do you think millennials need to do better at how they speak to themselves and how they deal with their internal self? Like from millennials who work, I've realized we have a bad relationship with work and that has resulted to a bad relationship with ourselves. Mm. We, I don't use overwork, right? Mm. But like we give everything our all to a point where we have nothing to give to ourselves. Okay. Um, like we, I, I, this is a personal belief. I think we overexert ourselves mm. in the workplace, in our mm. personal lives. Like everything to us is a serious experience that our energy needs to be left on the floor, mm. drinking, um, chilling, right? We do everything, we take it to the top, which goes back to, it's like, but do you think that at times that can be at a, to our detriment? Uh, yes and no. Yes, I think part of it is framed by goals that we set. By a certain age, we want to have ticked off being partner want to have kids or whatever right so that obviously adds pressure to the situation and just makes uh, everyone want to work at full capacity no because I think uh, given that we are young we do have a bit more in our tank to kind of give it our all but I do think sort of overexerting yourself over a period of time definitely leads to some form of crash Okay, right now, right, mm. at the level that you're going at, now, mm. I saw you this morning, you're finished. <laughs> at the level that you're going at, at 37, how do you think you feel and look? If you maintain exactly what you're doing right now, work-wise and everything. Uh, definitely not sustainable. I think maybe after 32, you need to start reevaluating life. What about you? At, at the same level that you're going at right now. 10 years from now, which is 37, how do you feel, look, and everything? I can definitely do more. Um, I don't think I would be... I don't to Luther's but we speak, spoke about millennials, we set all these goals for ourselves. Mm. I don't think I'm doing enough right now to be at the, you could say, the goals I've set for myself at 37 to reach them without mm. doing now. I think I'd be okay. Mm. Um, but I wouldn't say I am there, there. or even surpassing whatever my. my Actually, goals wasn't are. the question. <laughs> <laughs> but but on onto that point, 
I do think. <laughs> Okay. Daryl, I do think. It, sorry, Daryl's got a mission, guys. Daryl's got a <laughs> No, no, I feel sorry for my boy, Daryl. How are you doing? It's, uh, it's, it's, it's gonna get better, guys. Uh, if, if you're there, and it's in your DMs, you're gonna be rich. He's not doing enough. Whatever's happening right now is not enough. Look, it's about to add more. Look, Daryl, <laughs> what I've come to realize, right, is I think the goals we've set for ourselves, because uh, most of the times it's even before we've attempted something. Right, like you are going to, let's say you starting out as an entrepreneur, right? You want to be revenue wise, you want to be making 100 bar per year, right? I don't think at the time you set that goal, you understood the challenges that you would possibly face, right? And hence, I think us sort of setting these large milestones uh, are, is very misleading and could often put us in a position where we'll just constantly come out as a as a failure mm -hmm. right to speak to the point of, of goals hence i'm you know you kind of always need to reevaluate and your understanding of how things work obviously gets updated right um so i think that's partly why we always feel like we need to go at full capacity because the goals we've set for ourselves i honestly think are slightly unrealistic they're quite ludicrous yeah but it's because you know we think we can, we think we are Superman, we and, and we rightfully to a lot more. Yeah, yeah, and we rightfully can think so, right? Yeah. But I do think we need to go back and maybe update those a bit. So we should lower expectations. No, that's not no. the same. Update it's the goals. <laughs> be realistic, given you know what you want and knowing what you know, and then you can even go double it. Mm. I mean, now you know it's even possible, right? Mm. Um, or let's say you want it to be. I don't know, um, a hedge fund manager. Mm. And then you get into the hedge fund space, you find that you don't really like it. Mm. Now what? Now you'll it was have a dream before. Yeah, mm. now because it was glamorized, it was great, it was next thing after tech entrepreneurs and you, I don't know, US top 100, um, I don't know, richest people, that type of thing, right? Mm. And now you can make a goal and say, okay, I want to, I don't know, be a construction person mm. in Africa, Africa needs stuff built mm. and I want to be the best at that that's more in line with you that's you have a better understanding of yourself your abilities mm. and all of that that's what I mean okay. yeah so not to you know diminish your goals but just to align them to who you are and what you know is possible or not yeah so does anyone have any closing remarks on the fourth agreement about doing your best mm. Gun but you actually even the, Gun for it. the whole all, thing all, all agreements um Sure. So, like, what, me, wait. Okay, let me. What's your take on everything? Like, what's your conclu conclusion for your, for your own personal self? So we don't give advice here. Uh, <laughs> the, the first part, right? Uh, the fir the very first rule or agreement. Uh, I found it to be quite tricky being honest, brutally honest with yourself, and then being kind with yourself, right? Um, and then, sort of, even the second part where. Don't take things personal. I think that's a very difficult thing to practice. I think it's easy to preach, but to practice is a very different ball game, right? So you constantly, I guess, need to be conscious of these things. And yeah, man, just meditate daily, daily affirmations, tell yourself you're great, but call yourself out as well. Um, and gun for it. I, I say until the wheels come off. Maybe, probably not, but gun for it. And that is. The, the wheels are probably off. Uh, <laughs> um, personally, again, um, yeah, again, this is not a podcast to give you advice on how to live your life. Um, personally, I feel like I'm good at giving everything your best, mm. and I suck at the other three. And the other three, I suck. I suck at each depending on my mood. If I'm already down, and someone exacerbates that by saying something. There's a likelihood that I might make an assumption, take it personal, mm. or use any words that I don't mean at the time, mm. right? Um, and I feel like it's a process. Um, I don't expect, again, being kind, I don't expect myself to not make assumptions, right? But, ex but I have an expectation to always be aware when I'm making an assumption so that I can, I can bring myself back to a sober point to be like, what are the facts at hand? What do I know and what do I, and what I, what don't I know, right? 
and not taking anything personal, right? It's like, again, take whatever, because there's no, they, like it's, yo, we're not, we're not, we're not unemotional human beings. So taking things personal is part of the process, right? But being self-aware that maybe that wasn't an offense for me to take mm -hmm. is the journey. To sit down and be like, Daryl says something that clearly offended me, right? But what led to him saying that? Like, do I have a right to actually be offended by whatever that he said? Mm. And I've learned now in my old age to actually speak about it. the offense one, to actually speak about the things, to be like, yo, especially if you want f long friendships and long relationships, let's actually speak about those things because before I never, and I, I, I kept them in until a point where now they're bursting out and I was angry. But, and then you realize in, com in conversation that there was a miscommunication. The intentions were always good, but because maybe I felt some type of way that day and I took it to my heart. So I'd say that it's for me personally to just be self aware. Don't don't be that millennial that expects to be great at all four at the same time. But be self aware when you're not good at one thing and always understand where you're at. What about you? I'd say definitely the assumptions on. Um, I'd say it's trying to be honest with us. Why why do you think they're not responding to DMs boy? I can't say so. <laughs> <laughs> One last job <laughs> before we close off. Um, <laughs> What's so this? I, I, I'll definitely say. You it's, think you're not good enough? It's, it's, no, no, no. no. Huh? I Wait. don't really. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think she found a rich nigga? What? <laughs> <laughs> Are you projecting? <laughs> And it's funny, all the stuff has come from his own experience. <laughs> his own life experience, which he's projecting on us. Continue. Um, but I definitely say it's making assumptions. Okay. Um, that point for me really stood out because, like, you know, in every interaction you have, in everything that you experience, like, trying to not react all the time mm. to stuff and trying to say, okay, I know I had a, let's say, I had a, I had a bad day at work, things are going on, the world feels like it's crashing and burning, and someone, says hey dog the shoelace is untied and then you're like ah this guy's attacking me or whatever um or someone says something and you you because you have a certain way around the world is you assume that everyone's out to gun you and for me it's pausing taking a step back understanding that you know not everyone's out to gun you down um the world it's not everything it's always crashing and burning and not feeding into my own confirmation bias and trying to validate my emotions all the time and my experience all the time because sometimes how I feel may not be validated. Yes, I'm allowed to feel that way, but I cannot always justify how I feel in the moment because I feel like that's counterproductive. Your feelings are weird, eh? Mm, it's you weird. can't be a to your feelings. Mm, because they're, like, yes, because feel they're fucking... Yeah. They feel fluctuate. Them. Yeah. yeah. You feel them, but you can't trust them. And not allow how I feel in the moment to affect how I respond to what people are giving me. Um, and I think the other point... The, the other point we touched on about can understanding I, the process. Can, can I say something? There was like about two weeks ago now, my boy had a feeling. And he was telling me that, yo, dog, I'm feeling this kind of way. Things are going to happen. Yeah. Hey. Things happen the next day. It was like, I take it back. <laughs> it was like, I was in my feelings. Uh. I'm okay. <laughs> he was like, I was emotional to lie to you. Don't <laughs> listen to me. Forget it. <laughs> so, so yeah, that's yeah. yeah the whole and, feeling. And thing is also, um, <laughs> trusting the process, like understanding with the goals that we set and all that. Mm. And I said, life's a journey. Everything is really a journey. Yeah. And giving yourself room to make mistakes, come back, learn, and go through it, and not just being concerned with result, 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 result. But being more concerned with the process in whatever aspect is you talk about life. Yeah, that's it. Can you say goodbye for us? Speaking about the process, mm -hmm. we understand that getting views now is part of the process, but I man. <laughs> <laughs> Help us. <laughs> Let the process go faster. You know? Be a catalyst. Yes. Um sub, uh send to your friend, your friend's friends. Uh, send to your ex. Uh, yeah. If you still have their number, I guess. You don't you don't have an exit number? Ah, they delete me from their lives. So there's nothing <laughs> I can do. Even if it's there, I'm blocked. <laughs> because you, you know, you go, you go no GP, no, no, no state 
doesn't even say hi, hi. I'm using WhatsApp. It doesn't even have. <laughs> wait, wait. It's just a number. Hey, just say. Like, it's blue. Am I the only one there? Eh? Like, if you're chatting to a hi, man, yeah? <laughs> and then she, then you, like, he's asleep, man, yeah? and then you wake up and there's no DP and you panic. Yeah. <laughs> Like, yo, you check. Can I actually check? Like, what did I say last? <laughs> you what, did I say? what did I say last that has done this? <laughs> you, yeah, 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 yeah. You panic. <laughs> <laughs> you like, I was too. I was too. I was too. I was too. I need to give me jokes. <laughs> This is Tulani said I must be outlandish. I must be outlandish to my It must be spicy. It must be spicy. Damn, you, 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 you can't be too. You have to rock. You have to shock the system. You have to rock it. You have to rock the boat. You have to rock the boat. Rock the boat. <laughs> that is no TV. <laughs> It's weird. There's no photos. No, no, no. Titanic. You got Instagram. You're like, okay, she still follows me. But who does that? Why <laughs> would you block me and still follow me? I prefer that you do everything. So those <laughs> those are panic moments. It's a, it's a real panic moment. Stop right? making those assumptions. No, but yeah, it's true. The point we must stop assuming that the risky takes me as well. Can I tell you something? And then she responds with the cutest message ever, and you feel shit. Yeah. You're like, ah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, like for two hours. For two stressed. hours. For two hours, I was stressed. Cause I'm just like, yo. <laughs> and, and now you start doing things differently. But anyway, like actually, before we go, like, what, what's your like worst, uh, what you call this, like moment where, out of all four, where you just took it to heart and you felt down. No, we we, we gave that. Um, it's, so it's just me. Yeah. We let you drunk. Hey guys, uh, been great guys. Absolutely love these sessions, and we're getting better at it. I think. Let them tell you, boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought. I thought. I thought. I thought we're going with agreement number one. No. <laughs> Speaking good things to yourself. No, we're back to being toxic. Come on, guys. You should like. Episodes end. Episodes end. Hey, bye, guys. <laughs> Chizzle.